Attar is a Muslim because of your generosity, Ya Allah. Let him depart from this world with Iman, Ya Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله It is mentioned in القول البديع that somebody from Shiraz had a dream of Sayyidina Abu al-Abbas Ahmad bin Mansur Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. He was, he was wearing a crown that was studded with pearls. And the person who was seeing the dream asked him, Ma fa'ala Allahu bika? How did Allah Azza wa Jal deal with you? He said, Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, I used to read Durood Sharif in abundance. And because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved me forgave me and made me enter Jannah wearing a crown studded with pearls. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salatan wa salaman alayka ya Sayyidi ya Rasulallah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, welcome back to our silsila, Branches of Faith. In the previous episode, we learned about some beliefs pertaining to nubuwat, prophethood. And today, inshallah, azza wa jal, we will continue with the same topic, beliefs regarding prophethood. And inshallah, azza wa jal, today we will mention some of the miracles of certain prophets, alayhimu salatu was salam. One of the proofs of a nabi when he claims nubuwat is that when asked by the people, he should perform a miracle. Such an act which is beyond the understanding, beyond the intellect of the people and cannot be done by natural means. By the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam is able to do something supernatural. And then he challenges the kuffar to perform a miracle similar to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it such that the disbelievers will not be able to perform any miracle. The proof of prophethood is the performance of the miracle. So a person claiming to be a Nabi will never ever be able to, to perform a miracle. And this is, the, this is a distinct difference between nubuwat and wilayat. A person claiming to be a nabi has to perform a miracle when asked to do so, to prove his nubuwat. But wilayat does not have the same conditions. The performance of a miracle is not a condition of wilayat. People who do miraculous acts and claim to be a waliullah does not necessarily make them a waliullah. Supernatural acts are done by various people. A Nabi, if he performs a supernatural act or a miracle prior to the announcement of Nubuwat, that is called Irhas. And after the announcement of Nubuwat, it is called Mu'jiza. A Waliullah, a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a pious person, if he does such a supernatural act, it is called a Karamat. And if an ordinary believer performs such a supernatural act, this is called Ma'unat. And if a Kafir has to do something supernatural, then this is called Istidraj. So this means that supernatural acts can be done by kuffar and fusaq as well. But if a person claims nubuwat, 
then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not grant any permission for that person to do any supernatural act. Because the distinguishing factor between a Nabi and a non-Nabi is the performance of a miracle. Otherwise, how would you distinguish who is a Nabi and who is not a Nabi? But in the institution of Wilayat, see the institution of Nubuwat is an apparent institution. The Nabi makes the I'lan in Nubuwat. He makes the announcement of Nubuwat. But the institution of Wilayat is a hidden institution, very different to the institution of Nubuwat. A Nabi has to perform a miracle, but a Waliullah does not necessarily have to perform a, a miracle. And a person claiming to be a Waliullah could perform something supernatural, but a person claiming to be a Nabi can never perform a supernatural act. This is a very clear distinction between Wilayat and Nubuwat. These days there are many people that through trickery or through some supernatural act, they claim to be Waliullahs, they claim to be the friends of Allah. But they are open transgressors and they openly uh, disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do certain amals and certain types of acts which impress people and uh, by this people assume that they are Waliullahs. But this is not the case, dear viewers of Madani Channel. The Quran stipulates very clearly about wilayat and who is a waliullah. They are alladheena amanu wa kanu yattaqoon. They are those who believe and they possess taqwa. They are muttaqi. So a person who is not a muttaqi and a person who has false beliefs can never be a waliullah. So we hope that the distinction between the miracles of prophets and the miracles of non-prophets or the supernatural acts of non-prophets has been clearly explained. Now that we have understood the difference between a miracle performed by a Nabi and a non-Nabi, let us discuss some of the miracles performed by certain Anbiya alayhimu salatu was salam as is mentioned in the Holy Quran. One of the miracles of Sayyidina Musa Kalimullah ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam was his staff, his asa. The asa of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam was as tall as Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam. It was approximately 10 arms length, 15 feet high. This asa of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam, the staff of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam, was amongst five things which Nabi Adam alayhi salatu was salam brought from heaven. One was oud, the fragrant wood that was brought from Jannah. Number two was the asa, the staff of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Number three was the leaves of the fig tree. Number four was hajr aswad, the black stone. At that time, it was white in color. But due to it absorbing the sins, of the people who kiss it, it has now turned black in color, which is placed on the corner of the Kaaba Sharif. And number five is the ring of Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. The asa of, of, of Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam actually came from Nabi Adam alayhi salatu was salam and it was passed down until it reached Nabi. Shu'ib alayhi salatu was salam. Nabi Shu'ib alayhi salatu was salam was the prophet of Madian. And Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam traveled from Egypt, where he was born, to Madian. And there Hazrat Shu'ib alayhi salatu was salam got Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam married to his daughter Safura radiallahu ta'ala anha. Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam had served Sayyidina Shu'ib alayhi salatu was salam for 10 years. And he would herd the goats of Nabi Shu'ib alayhi salatu was salam during his stay. And after Nabi Shu'ib alayhi salatu was salam received the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Nabi Shu'ib alayhi salatu was salam had passed the asa, the staff, to Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Then when Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam left Madian for his homeland Egypt with uh, Sayyidatuna, uh, 
Safura radiallahu ta'ala anha, he took the staff with him and he was then uh, blessed uh, on his way. He, was, he, uh, he reached the sacred valley of Tuva and Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a glimpse of his divine light and raised his rank by bestowing him with prophethood, with nubuwat. The Holy Quran mentions uh, Almighty Allah Azawajal's address to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam in the following words. Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, therefore he is known as Kalimullah. He was communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had his asa, his staff on his right hand. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks him, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَىٰ قَالَ هِيَ عَصَاي أَتَوَكَّعُوا عَلَيْهَا وَأَهُشُّ بِهَا عَلَىٰ غَنَمِي عَلَىٰ غَنَمِي وَلِيَ فِيهَا مَآرِبُ أُخْرَىٰ Translation from Kanzul Iman. And what is this in your right hand, O Musa? He said, this is my staff. I support myself on it and I knock down leaves from my sheep with it and there are other uses for me in it. Hazrat Sayyidina Allama Abu Barakat Abdullah bin Ahmad Nasfi Ali Rahmatullah, rahmatullah al Qawi has stated in his tafsir regarding these words Ma'aribu Ukhra that this asa had other uses as well and he had stated and mentioned what are what are some of the other uses of the staff of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam would use it whilst walking. He would hold the staff and use it as a support whilst walking. He would also talk to the staff for entertainment. He would converse with the asa. During the day, the staff would turn into a tree and give shade to Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, subhanallah At night, the two um, forked branches on the top of the staff would uh, glow and provide a source of light. Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam also used it as a protection against enemies, against wild beasts, snakes, scorpions, etc. And when Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam would want to retrieve water from a well, then the staff would turn into ropes and the forked branches would turn into a bucket so that Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam could take water from the well and use that water. And when required, the staff would turn into a tree and would start bearing fruits. Whatever fruit Nabi Musa wasalam, desired, that was the fruit that would grow on that particular tree. And another miracle of the staff or the asa of Musa wasalam, was when Nabi Musa wasalam, would um, embed his, his staff into the ground then water would come out. These are some of the miracles of Nabi of the staff of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Salatun wa salaman alayka ya Sayyidi ya Rasulullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah. The very same staff, the asa of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was used to also show miracles and prove the nubuwat of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Fir'aun had initiated a huge carnival where hundreds of thousands of people were called and on one side there were magicians and on the other side was Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. And the magicians, they threw their things onto the ground and their, whatever it was, ropes or whatever it was, turned into snakes. Nabi 
Musa alayhi salatu was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to throw what is on in his right hand onto the ground. And that asa that was in his hand turned into a gigantic snake, snake which ate up the snakes of the magicians of Fir'aun. The, the Holy Quran mentions قَالُوا يَا مُوسَىٰ إِمَّا أَن تُلْقِيَ وَإِمَّا أَن نَكُونَ أَوَّلَ مَنْ أَلْقَىٰ قَالَ بَلْ أَلْقُوا فَإِذَا حِبَالُهُمْ وَعِصِيُّهُمْ يُخَيَّلُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ سِحْرِهِمْ أَنَّهَا تَسْعَى فَأَوْجَسَ فِي نَفْسِهِ خِيفَةً مُوسَى قُلْنَا لَا تَخَفْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْأَعْلَى وَأَلْقِ مَا فِي يَمِينِكَ تَلْقَفْ مَا صَنَعُوا إِنَّمَا صَنَعُوا كَيْدُ سَاحِرٍ وَلَا يُفْلِحُ السَّاحِرُ حَيْثُ أَتَى فَأُلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سُجَّدًا قَالُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ هَارُونَ وَمُوسَىٰ Translation from Kanzul Iman They said, O oh Musa, either you throw first or shall we throw first? He said, rather you may throw. Thereupon their cords and their staffs by the strength of their magic appeared to him as if they were serpents moving fast. And Musa sensed fear in his heart. We said, do not fear, it is you who is dominant. And cast down which is in your right hand, it will devour all that they have fabricated. What they have made is only a magician's deceit, and a magician is never successful wherever he comes. Therefore, all the magicians were thrown down in prostration. They said, we accept faith in the one who is the Rabb of Harun and Musa. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salatan wa salaman alayka ya Sayyidi ya Rasulallahu ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, this was one of the mu'ajizat of Sayyidina Musa Kalimullah ala nabina wa alayhi salatu was salam that the asa turned into a serpent, into a snake that was bigger than the serpents of the magicians. And the magicians, what they had done wasn't reality, it was just the tricks of magic. But Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam's asa by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned into a snake and as we have mentioned before, this Asa had many miracles and turned into many things like trees and gave light and used to converse with Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Musa alayhi salatu was salam used it for many, many things as well. There is also another miraculous event that took place with Sayyidina Musa ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam. And that is regarding uh, a stone. In the time of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam, people used to have the habit of bathing naked, stark naked, in public. But uh, the Prophet of Allah azza wa jal would never tolerate uh, such an indecent act of exposing his sattar to other people. Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam would either cover himself when taking a bath, or if he had to bath naked, it would be in total isolation. So one day, Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam went into an isolated area and there was a spring there where Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam took a bath. He left his clothes on a rock and he took a bath naked. And uh, at that time, people, because Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam never exposed his sattar, so the people started talking that Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam has 
some spots of leprosy, some white marks, and that's the reason why he covers himself, uh, himself and takes a bath. So when Nabi Musa والسلام, left his clothes on the rock and was taking a bath, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this rock started running with the clothes of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam started chasing the rock and saying, and said, oh rock my clothes, oh rock my clothes. And uh, this rock eventually went where the people were and went street to street with the clothes of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Nabi Musa alayhi salam was focused on, on chasing the rock that had its clothes. When the people had seen Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam stark naked, they noticed that there was no flaws in the body of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. As we have mentioned previously, that a Nabi will never be inflicted with such a disease that will repel people from him. And uh, therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, uh, granted this stone permission to run away from Musa alayhi salatu wasalam to show the people that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was flawless from head to toe. And this was by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As soon as all the people had seen Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam uh, stark naked, then they, uh, then the stone had stopped. Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam dressed himself. And this particular stone Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam put in his bag. There was a time when Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam went with Bani Israel uh, to uh, to make jihad against the Amalika. The Amalika were the people who dominated Syria. The Bani Israel originated from Syria, but during the time of Nabi Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, they had moved to Egypt. And after the death of Fir'aun, after he drowned in, in the, he perished in the river Nile, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam to make jihad against the Amalika. So the Bani Israel, about 600,000 of them, went with Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam to make jihad. And just before they reached Syria, they became afraid of the Amalika. And as a consequence of this obeying the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were punished in such a way that they, they were straying and wandering on the plains of Taya for 40 years and could not get out of it. They were lost. Sayyidina Musa wasalam, stayed with them on those plains and the people became very restless due to hunger and thirst. And another mu'jizah of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with man and salwa. وَظَلَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَ وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى And man is a type of sweet confectionery. It used to fall like dew would fall on the leaves of plants. Man, and it was similar to honey and uh, it, was a, it was like a sweet dish. And salwa was like a roasted bird. And by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every morning when they got up, they would find man and salwa and they would uh, eat these foods, uh, these heavenly foods that was provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when they became thirsty, Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam with that very rock that ran away with the clothes of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, took it out of his bag and he took his asa and he uh, embedded it in that stone. And when he planted it in that stone, 12 springs came out for the 12 tribes of Bani Israel. And for 40 years, those springs were there and each tribe drank from their respective springs. And this was also another miracle of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, related also to the asa, the staff of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and the stone that ran away with the clothes. The dua of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was mustajab with regards to man and salwa. This was some miracles regarding Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Dear viewers of Madani channel, remember, as we have mentioned before, that miracles of prophets are a distinction of their prophethood. It confirms their prophethood. 
But these days, many people do supernatural acts and they try to fool people into thinking that they are Waliullahs. And they have many followers. They do things that people are amazed. And these days also, you know, we take, you know, little um, uh, things that are very small to be karamats, to be miracles and supernatural acts. Supernatural acts is that which the mind and the intellect cannot understand and cannot be done naturally by nature. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, Alhamdulillah Jal, today we have listened to uh, about some miracles regarding Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam. We have understood the difference between a mu'ajiza, a karamat, uh, irhas, uh, ma'unat, as well as istidraj. So we should familiarize ourselves with these things because a person who does something unnatural against nature can, is not necessarily a waliullah and a person who claims nubuwwat will never ever be able to do a supernatural act. These things and many more are learned in the Madani Mahal of dawat -e islami Stay attached to this Madani Mahal of dawat -e islami so that you can increase your knowledge, so that you can correct your beliefs, your aqaid regarding many things, regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, prophets, um, alam -e barzakh jannat and jahannam, and we can have correct beliefs, and we can have a correct understanding of this beautiful deen of Islam. Stay tuned to Madani channel for more. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad. Is a Muslim because of your generosity, Ya Allah. Let him depart from this world with Iman.